On the 7th of February, 2024, a mysterious hacker group called the Prana Network released 10 gigabytes of data taken from a company called Sahara Thunder. The leaks contained highly classified information on the Shahed drones, which Russia is using to devastate Ukrainian infrastructure, how they are made, how much they cost, and what Russia's domestic Shahed factory will look like. These are just some of the things divulged in the leaked data. Before we dive in, we must first address one obvious question. What is Sahara Thunder? Aren't Shahed drones produced by Iran's Shahed aviation industries? Let me explain. Iran is unique in that its economy is partly controlled by a branch of its armed forces, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, or IRGC. The IRGC's reach is vast, with its own spy agency, aerospace force, nuclear protection force, navy, and importantly, a business empire. This business empire accounts for 30% of Iranian GDP and spans from construction to telecommunications to businesses like Sahara Thunder and Shahed Aviation Industries. While Shahed Aviation is in charge of manufacturing drones, Sahara Thunder seems to specialize in the exports of risky goods. What evidence do we have of this? Well, the leaks included a complete list of emails sent from their company email address. These mostly discuss the payment and location of various oil tankers. But an online search for one tanker they discuss brings up a U.S. court case where individuals are accused of helping the IRGC illegally export over $100 million worth of oil to China using the tanker, which incredibly was purchased using a loan from U.S. financiers. It seems that in addition to their role in the exportation of oil, Sahara Thunder was also tasked with both exporting the Shahed family of drones and helping plan out the domestic Russian factory. Among the emails, there are documents suggesting a role in the selection of a factory location. For example, the leaks contain a brochure advertising the benefits of opening a company in the Tatarstan region of Russia. In the classic Soviet tradition of being content with very little, the town where the factory would eventually be built, Yelabuga, celebrates the fact that they have both a supermarket and a medical clinic. While this brochure tells us about the location of the factory, it is two photos which tell us about who the workers are. A photo of a masked man holding a flag, which blends the Nazi swastika with NATO's compass. And a photo of children lined up outside an industrial-looking building. These photos may seem random, but they had previously been discussed in a report by Russian underground investigative journalists looking at the production of Shahed drones. The report focused on the Alabuga Polytechnic College, a technical school near the site of the Russian Shahed factory where most students are children between the ages of 15 to 17. The school was fairly normal prior to the war, other than an odd ritual where students get up at 5 a.m. every weekend to reenact the battles of the Great Patriotic War with paintball guns. The photos reflect one of the most bizarre aspects of this tradition. The Nazi flags are replaced with NATO-esque flags. As Russia onshored production of the Shahed drone, the students at the nearby Alabuga Polytechnic College became the easiest source of cheap and plentiful labor. Reports suggest long hours and little sleep as they assemble as many Shahed drones as possible. But reports imply that the labor provided by the Polytechnic is not enough, with increasing numbers of students from Africa being invited to study there. These allegations seem to be at least partly true, with a simple online search for the Polytechnic uncovering adverts published on Sputnik Africa. Further searches also indicate that Russian embassies in Africa are playing a role in this recruitment drive. In this case, we can see a document from the Nigerian Federal Ministry of Education. The document notifies Nigerians that the Russian embassy is offering 150 scholarships to the Alabuga Polytechnic College. Yes, the same polytechnic, which Russian journalists believe supplies labor for the Shahed drone factory. This scholarship comes with a stipend, accommodation, transportation, and the offer of a job after the scholarship is completed. Incredibly, the language requirements for the scholarship are minimal, with applicants being told that they must know 100 Russian words. While we cannot determine whether these students would be given jobs in the assembly of Shahed drones, the extra manpower could allow for other workers to be shifted to the assembly lines. In any case, manpower shortages in times of war are not uncommon, so let's move on to the most sensitive information leaks about the Shahid drone itself. The variant of the Shahed mentioned in the leaks is the Delta-winged Shahed 136. These have a range of at least 600 miles and carry a 110-pound warhead. 
Western analysts had been particularly worried about the low cost of these drones relative to the air defense weaponry used to shoot them down. Estimates were that the drone would cost around $20,000 to produce, whereas a shoulder-fired Stinger missile costs around $400,000 and a more capable AMRAAM missile costs around $1 million. To put that ratio into perspective, the Russians would be able to produce 50 drones for the price of the one AMRAAM missile. But fortunately for Ukraine and its allies, the leaks revealed that the cost of a Shahed drone had been severely underestimated. The Sahara Thunder documents published by the Prana Group showed that a single Shahed typically costs $375,000 to produce. But with Russia buying them in bulk, they were offered two potential deals. If they purchased 2,000 drones, they would be able to purchase them at $290,000 each. But if they purchased 6,000 drones, they would pay $193,000 per drone. Russia agreed on this larger deal, but also purchased the option to produce these drones on license in their own Russian factory in Yelabuga. With this license fee included, the final bill was $1.8 billion. But this final bill leads to one interesting question. The Russians and Iranians negotiated their deal in dollars. How are these heavily sanctioned countries going to arrange an international payment in the currency of their chief competitor? The answer is simple, they didn't. Russia reportedly paid in pure gold bullion, shipping more than two tons to Sahara Thunder. As far as we can tell, Russia aims to make this the last major payment they make for the Shahed. The focus moving forward is to improve production efficiency in the Russian factory. This efficiency drive has multiple parts. First, they are creating a less expensive version of the Shahed called the Hawk. The Hawk is predicted to have a range of 215 miles, which whilst far less than the Shahed, is still enough to target most of Ukraine if launched from Russian-occupied territories. Second, by onshoring the production of these drones in a custom-built facility, they can manufacture the airframe, navigation modules, engines and propellers, all under the same roof. This should deliver cost savings, and according to some estimates, allow for the production of 200 shahids per month at a target cost of $50,000 each. While this is an astonishingly low price for a weapon capable of mangling important infrastructure, some new weapons are finally bringing down the cost of air defense. In the electronic warfare realm, a new system called Pokrova is believed to use GPS spoofing to subtly guide the shahids away from their intended target. Unlike previous attempts to outright jam the GPS signals, this seems to be achieving some success. On the kinetic side, the delivery of an American system called Vampire has already resulted in a documented interception of a Shahed drone. The Vampire uses a laser-guided 70mm rocket to intercept aerial targets. These 70mm guided rockets are said to cost around $25,000, making it less expensive than even the most optimistic Russian estimates for a domestic Shahed. With U.S. military aid to Ukraine drying up, it is not clear if these will be fielded in sufficient numbers to play a significant role in Ukraine's air defense network, but it serves as a proof of concept demonstrating that cost-effective air defense against Shahed's is possible. While the leaked documents contain more information, we have now covered the most significant findings. If you are interested in military news and analysis, I would appreciate a comment or like. In the meanwhile, thank you for watching.